so you're probably all aware already of it's probably the most famous karting video out there um it's someone taking a 250 around the Isle of Man, right? And I think we've all seen it shared across the internet for years. For like, like ten, it was one of the first sort of breakthrough karting videos on the net, um, because it's so crazy to watch this. Uh, if you're if you don't know anything about karting, you, all you see is an onboard of this this cart that seems to be at warp speed going through the streets of the Isle of Man. And obviously, the Isle of Man's very evocative for uh, because of the Isle of Man TT and. Um, the fact they used to race carts around there is a kind of, even weirdly, with that video being a success, and and obviously Duke now uploading some some videos that that were broadcast from the race, it's still a bit of an obscure, unknown event. Um, so I just wanted to talk about it. Um, now I'm not like the biggest karting historian. If you watch my videos, you you probably realise that I I'm sort of embedded in the past, but I wouldn't say I'm I'm a, a sort of Dave Bewley or. or or that kind of thing. Well, I know little intricacies of the past. I like the general kind of feeling of it and the philosophy of it, um, and what it meant to live in that time. So I really wanted to talk about karting on the Isle of Man, this particular event, and sort of uh, illuminate that this this event that was that ended up being called the Manx GP. It started in the one I'm talking about now, which is the, the race around Peel in on the Isle of Man. It started in a in 1985 and it was the Isle of Man Kart Racing Association I think the first event was like a one day event practice at six and then uh, they raced throughout the day but and then I think it evolved from that point but it wasn't the first time carts were raced on the Isle of Man um, you can go back to 1968 and you can find that there was a, a, the Isle of Man Kart Week and I think I think the venue sort of changed where they raced but part of the main straight for one of the races, I think it was Douglas, actually they shared some of the course, the actual TT course, so if you, uh, I can't use any video from that time, but if you look it up on YouTube, you can see these old carts going around, and I think another event uh, was the Southern 100, that the, the bikers will be familiar with, but they're, they're, one of the support races was carts as well. So the, the karting on the island kind of goes back you know 50 60 years and it's like an embedded part of the culture there but i think as a sport it's kind of been long forgotten um and i think it's kind of a shame really because i think uh, when me talking about this is, is more me talking about a past where karting was in front of people you know people would literally see it because you know you walk to the end of their garden and there it is these sort of cars whizzing by and um, I think the 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 Manx GP is particularly well known for uh, 250s and 125 gearbox carts but I think uh, they eventually had like pro kart classes I think Rotax had a grid I don't know if um, I think they had hundreds race around it but I can't be 100% sure um, but it's such a unique event and you're putting carts right in front of people and um, it does. It, it is really good for the sport because I think uh, maybe after the what happened with the Isle of Man, uh, with the Manx GP, unfortunately um, Helen Adcock was like tragically killed, and I think I, I, I'm not sure if that was the main reason why it stopped, but obviously it was one of uh, factors. Um, it, it didn't carry on, and I think it was one of the last events really on um, in this country that you know Kaim was was put in front of people's faces. I mean, uh, Jeremy Pinney, who was the 210 winner in 1989, he, he told Car and Supercar it was one of the roughest and most dangerous circuits he ever raced on, but he was so drawn to it, he, he wanted to race there. But, um, and obviously, you know, you do look back and go, is it too dangerous? But at the same time, you, you can still look at it and think it was such a great thing that carts could be put in front of people and, you, you know, people could engage with it. And, um, and that helps drive a sport forward, you know. I think when I spoke about uh, Morecambe, when I spoke about Plymouth, it's the same kind of narrative. We, we look back and you see these amazing, amazing races. And then after <clears throat> maybe 2005, when, when this race ended, um, you know, we sort of, what's the word, we... Sort of, we kind of went into our shell and we, we hid away because you know 
As, as much as these venues like Shenny and Kim Bolton are classic venues, you are hidden from, from the public, you know, and I think part of me is quite uh, wistful. Uh, I don't know if that's a term. There's a term, I forget the name of it, if you're nostalgic for a time you never lived. And I, rem I, I do think about those days and think, you know, imagine driving around the Island Man on a 250 or, or anything, really. You know, and the feeling that that and the emotion that must generate because... I don't know, I just love the idea of turning up to a racetrack and it's completely unique, it's completely novel and it's not just the same circuits that you go to. Every time you go to a street race, there's always something different. Even though it could be the same venue, there's something very uh, fresh about it every time you go because there's new people, people are so close and you know, the fact that you could literally prior to to this disaster we're living through you could go to a restaurant or you could go to a bar you could meet people and it's all in the same uh, the same area that you're racing in i find that really enthralling so yeah if you watch the videos and uh, i think bruce moore has, has kindly let me use some footage that he had that was was taken at the side of the track you know home footage i think that's that's really the best footage because you can sort of see the people watching how you know these carts uh, uh, you know a 250e um back then i mean nowadays a, a 250 car division one is as quick as a gt3 race car right but back then relative to everything else they would have been as fast as anything else so you wouldn't be able to find much quicker machines on on a more unsuitable circuit it does remind me of morecambe that sort of culture of like you know anything's possible so yeah i just wanted to have a quick talk about it really i was i did plan to go and actually go to the Isle of Man and if, if, if my Patreon was, was big enough I would have invested this sort of invested in going there and, and seeing the place and, and going around the circuit of, but of course now that kind of thing is going to be very hard to do so either way I thought I'd, I'd talk about it anyway and um, really kind of just try and understand the, the emotion and the feeling of, of racing that sort of place and I guess part of me yearns for that again and um, it's something I missed out on. I think I got a touch of it when I went to Las Vegas to watch um, Schumacher at the Supernats. But I can imagine the Iron Man would be something even even more special. I know there's been people have tried to reignite it um, and get it started up again, but I, in in this era, and, and I, I talk about it in the context of before all of this 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 stuff, but even in this era it'd be incredibly difficult to, to get something like that arranged but it, it is possible you know if, if you've got the right motivation to do it so yeah some of the footage I hope you're seeing you know I'm cutting in on this video will will blow your mind a bit because it blows my mind that you know one mistake and you're in someone's front garden <laughs> you know and um, it yeah just just incredible and I've seen a, f a few of the sort of offs there and, and they are pretty hairy you know and it's it is incredibly dangerous, but you accept the risks, you know, and um, I think for a sport like karting, it's something quite cool to look back on and go, wow. I know in Italy and some places in South America and North America, there's there's still a sort of culture of street racing and um, it's sort of lost over here a bit, which is a shame. Because I think for a sport that, where you're trying to get in front of people, and we are completely invisible, I mean, especially the long circuit Division 1 cars, I mean, they've, they've disappeared off the sort of face of the earth in terms of like knowing it exists you know like karting magazine um you had and then prior to that you had carts and super carts which was created i think partly because super carts wasn't getting the coverage they felt that it could be getting but now you don't have any of that and you have a few odd youtube videos but yeah i hope um i hope it just you know sparks a, a few bits of inspiration in, in people watching because I, I find it incredible i i i, I don't i i can't imagine driving it I, the, the bumps and the speeds must be just unreal so amazing and that leads me on to um, from from the harsh realities of danger and, and motorsport to, to the, the project that I'm doing at the moment uh, which is the British supercar no Jesus not the British supercar I can't say that the car in one supercar championship which is um, which is coming up in a week's time uh, and I think that's going to be fantastic we're using a sort of an online platform it's not real for those that are watching i just don't like the term e-sport i think it, or, or e-league or the league i just just call it what it is let's call it british karting one supercar championship be done with it 
and uh, that's coming up in a week's time. We've got Alpha Live doing um, doing the streaming of that. We've got Will Dendy, who, who we're very familiar with. He's he's going to be commentating as well. So that's going to be a good laugh. I can't wait for it. Really, the, the for those that are watching that might not be familiar with with Sims, still um, we're using R Factor Two, and there's a mod uh, created by by Sangrione, and uh, it's a supercut mod and. He, he's uh, done a release to pack for us, the Kite One Season pack, so he's been really helpful and it actually drives really well. I, I occasionally get emails going, you know, people going, well, I tried the mod and I don't think it's very realistic. And it's like, well, you know, everybody, uh, driving experience is subjective. And to me, if I drive a sim and it feels like I'm driving, I, I'm like, it's good enough for me. And I think it's good enough. It's more than good enough. We've got a couple of long circuit boys on it in, in the league as well, in the championship, who, who, you know, they all agree it's pretty good. So. Um, I think the racing is going to be the best racing because everybody's been watching stuff recently on um, with uh, with I Racing doing their stuff and, and the real racers. What is it? Not the virtual GP or whatever, and that kind of stuff. It's okay, but I've, I've watched the racing on this and, and I'm partaking in it. I'm going. I think this could be actually better than everything because because the cart sort of bounce about and stuff on the circuits. They actually look a bit lively. It looks a bit edgy. So hopefully. If you want to tune in on, on uh, it'll be a week, a week yesterday when this goes out. Um, so if you want to tune in, tune in, and uh, we hope to make it a bit more fun and interesting because it can get a bit stale. So we want to make it as, as fun as and interesting as possible. So yes, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and, and hopefully you can tune in next week, and I can do some more videos. Now I'm indoors. Unfortunately, I've had to take my van off the road. And uh, so the van is now in the garage, so I can't get in the garage, I can't do anything. And hopefully when when it's safe to do so, I think that's a priority, we can um, start getting back the projects that we planned earlier in the year. Uh, the budget cart challenge, the twin cart, I was doing with Jack Dex. Uh, he's racing in this uh, the, the Super Cup Championship with us, so you know that's going to be a good laugh. Um, if anybody knows Jack, he, he's, uh, he's aggressive, <laughs> so that'll be good. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it probably didn't get as much detail as I wanted to with the Island Man thing, but um, I think once I get the chance to, um, we'll, we'll go over to the Island Man and we'll look into the actual history of like the Cart Week in, in, from 68 to maybe 70. I can't remember what year it ended. That'll be a good thing to go into, and um, obviously Peel and what well, happened with the Max GP. So, yep, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, thanks to all my Patreons as well. And uh, oh, my screen's gone off, so <laughs> I think it's telling me it's time to end the video. So thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you soon. Well, I'll see you next week, because uh, it'll be on the Alpha Live channel. That's where it's going to be broadcast, and then I'll up so upload the sort of races after that on onto this channel. So you can all watch, and you can all call us bandits. You know. So, yeah, thank you, and uh, we'll see you soon.